हेलो फ्रेंड मेरा नाम सत्य कुमार फोटो सब एडिटर है आप मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करेंगे आपको बहुत सारे फोटोशॉप ट्यूटोरियल मिलेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर यूट्यूब चैनल फाइंड द लिंक्स टू दीज इमेजेस राइट बिलो दिस वीडियो इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन वी गोना स्टार्ट आउट विद दीस टू लेयर्स द फोटो फ्रेम बैकग्राउंड एंड द स्नो बॉर्डर आई हैव देम ऑन टू सेपरेट लेयर्स ऑफ कोर्स एंड व्हाट वी वांट टू डू इज वी वांट टू आइसोलेट दिस ब्लैक एरिया हियर वी कैन ऑफ कोर्स क्रिएट अ सिलेक्शन अराउंड द ब्लैक एरिया टू आइसोलेट इट बट I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it and I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner. Then click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up, and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna make it red just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm gonna do now is enable the layer of the snow border. I'm gonna click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel, and I'm also gonna. Double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Control. Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. Then I'm gonna enable the layer right above that, and I'm just gonna make a selection around the snow border. So I'm gonna click on the Quick Selection tool, and I'm simply gonna click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag, and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just gonna select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously you're not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. Okay, now that I have the selection active around the snow border, I'm gonna select that top layer. We shift the edge with a negative value, and see how that's adjusted. So I can keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair, and hopefully we'll get a better selection. So now didn't do that good of a job here, so. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now, and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm gonna press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. So I'm just gonna paint with white in these areas here, and I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial, and you can see the final image. But I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here, and like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial, and you can see my final results. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen. And what we're gonna work on now is extra elements that are gonna help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use 
this shovel with the snow so let me just double click on that to open that up and by the way the links to these files are on the description you have to download them from adobe stock they're not free but you can use a watermark preview to practice on so i would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn so the first thing i gotta do is get rid of this shovel i'm gonna click on the lasso tool i'm gonna make a selection around the shovel and as you can see it's not very accurate that's okay then i can hold shift and backspace or you can go into edit fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d on the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with a foreground color mac then ctrl d command d on the mac to deselect now we got to work on this bottom part there's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto a self using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm gonna drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm gonna do now is click on the brush tool. Select black as my foreground color so I can... And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm gonna press Control, Command on the Mac. Click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the layers panel. On the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work. Drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab and then coming down and releasing and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control the horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right-click on it and choose Distort, just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press Enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. Right-click, Fit to Screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool so maybe something like that. What we're gonna do now is work with different elements. So I'm gonna open up the libraries panel and I'm gonna open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previous. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press control C. I'm going to deselect that element, control D, command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with. I'm going to paste it here. Control V, Command V on the Mac. And there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode 
to screen so the black pixels disappear and we only keep the bright pixels in this case it's now then i'm going to press ctrl t and paste that in here change the blend mode to screen ctrl t to transform that's command t in the mac ctrl zero command zero on the mac and scale this one in as well and i'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position maybe right about here or so but i want this one to be in the back so i'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back be right here it needs to be in between the layer that's popping out the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector so right in between those two so now the snow follows through into the frame now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows so first of all the snow here in the table it needs a shadow so i'm going to open up this group double click on the snow layer here and click on drop shadow notice a little drop shadow there you can use the settings that i have here if you like Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadows. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm gonna do now is right above this snow element here, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the eyedropper tool, select that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light. Something like that and just continue that shadow it's coming up the board and actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board so maybe something like this and then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down so maybe something like that now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. 